Well, hey, Becoming Me, I am so excited to introduce you to my warrior friend, Brooke. Brooke, welcome to becomingme.tv. Thanks, Emily. It's great to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. You are such an inspiration to me already, and I cannot wait to dive into your journey today. Um, But I feel like we should probably kick it off like we do most Becoming Stories with the most challenging question. Like, Mm. who is Brooke Martin if someone doesn't (laughs) know you? That's a question that I am actually having to rediscover right now. Um, Yeah, it's so it's kind of the million dollar question for me. I recently left uh, the TV news industry after 15 years of being a TV news anchor. And, um, and that wasn't really the hard part, because I felt God so clearly leading me in another Mm -hmm. chapter. But now that I've stepped into that chapter, I'm like, Wait, wait a second. Like, who, who am I without this? Yes. Like, wh- wh- what colors do I like to wear? Like, you know, like, yeah. how should I talk? <laughs> it's so yes. odd. I, I just kind of like underestimated um, what the just the personal part of that journey would be. So, um, so yeah, TV news anchor, but uh, also a mother to two wonderful kids, a wife, a sister, um, daughter. Um, we live in Indianapolis, Indiana, so it is freezing right now and just trying to get through the winter, but, uh, that's just kind of the snapshot of me. I love it. You know, Brooke, I've had the privilege of getting to know a little bit of your story and I would love for you just in this time, this space to unpack your journey. Like what has made Brooke who Brooke is today? What's your story? Mm. So I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is, if, if anyone's familiar, it's Amish country. I am. Uh, are you? Yes. I grew Have up in Clarion. There? Yeah. I like grew up in Clarion, Pennsylvania. So yes, I've been to Lancaster many times. Yes. Right. So all of my neighbors were Amish. Um, my dad's first business, all of his employees were Amish. And so I, just, I went to, to college in Philadelphia and I remember specifically like getting to college and going back home for the first weekend. And I was like, Oh, I grew up like kind of weird. Like this is just different from most people, although it was amazing. Um, I really did have a, a wonderful upbringing and childhood. Um, my family was very involved in our local mm-hmm. church. My mom and dad both were in leadership roles. Uh, it was me and my older brother, just really close knit and, um, and probably a little bit or a lot naive in a lot of ways mm-hmm. until I was 13 and my parents in, in my, from my viewpoint, um, unexpectedly divorced and separated. Wow. And so it was kind of just like the, the first taste of the real world for little Brookie. And, uh, and so that kind of just led me on a path of having to understand faith, um, for myself and understand who Jesus is to me. And, um, you know, looking back incredibly valuable, but incredibly mm-hmm. painful, um, so I, I always kind of feel like I walked through my teenage, maybe twenties, um, straddling this line of always loving Jesus, but always, mm-hmm. um, having a, a big foot in the world too. And, um, for, for good and, and bad reasons, but I, uh, went to Temple University in Philadelphia to study broadcasting and, um, you know, had a great time, but it was about my junior year that I became, feeling incredibly empty. It was almost like, Mm. I wouldn't say depressed, but I just got to this point where I missed Jesus. Like I just, like I missed a friend Mm. and I had been just kind of unknowingly running from him, just really pursuing pleasure and and me. And, um, and so at that time, totally unknown. I mean, my mom sent me in the mail, um, Rick Warren's purpose driven life, right. Probably thinking I would never read it. And I like devoured it. Like I, I went wow. through it. So, so I spent so much time with it and I got to the end of it and didn't even tell mm-hmm. her I was reading it. And I was just like, this, this is it. Like this, like this is what my soul is longing for. And, um, and so I had spring break coming up like in, I don't know, a couple months. And I thought this, I, I'm a broke college kid. All I have to offer you, Lord, is this week. So I'm going to give it to you. And I started looking at missions trips, nothing, nothing aligned. And then um, again, my mom called about two weeks before my mission trip, I kind of resigned to just going home and maybe working in the homeless shelter or something. And uh, she said, I know you're never going to want to do this, but I just have to ask, there's two spots open to this missions trip from this date to this date. And it was exactly my spring break, like exactly. And I said, I don't even need to know anything more. Just sign me up. And that was really my first taste of God 
flexing. I mean, mm. like taking my little yes or my measly, you know, um, sense mm-hmm. and, and blowing my mind. And that was really the start of it. I went to Mexico that week, met a mm-hmm. couple who was starting a YWAM base um, in Mazatlan with an emphasis on communications. I agreed to move there and join them and start that base. Um, and, you know, and just one thing after another um, kind of led me back into broadcasting. God made it very clear that he mm-hmm. needs his children in the secular world. He needs mm-hmm. us to be a light and um, where I was kind of questioning like, man, this just feels, doesn't feel a whole lot like you, God. Um, But he was very clear. And so I spent Mm -hmm. the next 15 years um, as a news anchor. So (laughs) kind of bring the two. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, you shared in some of your intro that you are in the middle of a transition. You're not a news anchor anymore. So walk me through this new chapter of your story. What's been happening? Um, what hasn't been happening? So I, um, I've been in Indianapolis for about nine years and, uh, was sitting in my dream job. I was a main anchor Mm -hmm. at a great station and loved what I did, loved the, the viewers and the community that I developed here. And, uh, in October of 2018, Mm -hmm. uh, we had one son who was two years old at the time. We were pregnant with our second child. We had already publicly announced it. And um, I went in for a bad case of bronchitis into my OB because I didn't have primary care at that time. So I just wanted to grab some antibiotics. Uh, She said, you want to sneak in and see the baby while you're here? I said, yes. And um, it was then when I was alone that um, we made a really devastating um, discovery. Mm. Um, Our baby, we didn't know the gender at that time, um, was perfectly developing except um, her head. Her skull Mm. was not closing and it's Mm. called anencephaly. And um, just totally, totally, I mean, as you can imagine, just not expecting anything. I was like, I'm here for bronchitis. Um, And I'm sitting there alone in the ultrasound room. And I just keep hearing this word in my heart, Emmanuel, Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the name. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I brushed it off in the, in the time because I just was confused. I was like, why am I hearing, I was like associating it with Christmas. And I was like, why am I hearing Emmanuel? Not like just yeah. didn't think much of it, but I remember hearing it so clearly. And um, my husband rushed to um, the office and we walked through um, options, which most people choose to terminate um, mm-hmm. with anencephaly. And, and we immediately um, by the grace of God decided to carry. Mm-hmm. And um that was the beginning of a really wild journey. Um, mm-hmm. One where I all of a sudden had to tell my own story because I had a choice at that point. Like I could keep it a secret, even though everyone knew I was pregnant and they'd be watching me grow on air every day. And mm-hmm. I could lie when they asked, how are you doing? You know, I mean, <laughs> what kind of, what kind of six months is that? So, um, so uh, we decided to, to be honest and tell what was going on. And um we uh, named our daughter um, Emma Noel for Emmanuel. Um, and we learned in, in those moments, those precious, precious moments with her that um, God was, he had a really important message to send through her. Mm-hmm. And it was to tell us that he is with us, which is what Emmanuel means. Um, that there is nothing that can keep him from us. No amount of tragedy, not even death. Um, and so I, I made a vow kind of to just walk through it as transparently as I could with the viewers. Um, I didn't want to put on a front. I didn't want to act like I was okay when I wasn't. And the, um, the response that, that we got through it was just remarkable. Um, I mean, Cole and I, my husband sat down at the very beginning, just crushed, you know, just, just devastated. And we were like, what do we have here? Like, again, like, what do we have? And we just agreed. We have one prayer. And it was three words. And it was, God, be glorified. Mm. We don't know what this looks like. Like, we don't know how long we're going to have with our daughter. We don't know anything. But promise us that you will be glorified. 
like he was that. And um, man, did he answer that prayer. Um, he took our story around the world. And um, I, we heard from thousands of people, uh, many who have walked through similar situations, some who were just so confused at how we could have hope and joy um, in the middle of something like this. And it, like probably unknowingly at the time, but I think it planted a seed in my heart um, that there are so many people who are hurting Mm -hmm. and so many people who are lost and who don't even understand what hope is. And so we um, delivered Emma on March 15th of 2019. Um, She lived 21 minutes. And, um, she was in Colt's arms when she passed into our Heavenly Fathers. And it was just a really, um, really remarkable time with her. We were actually able to um, have her in our hospital room for three days, thanks to um, a device called a cuddle cot, which I think you had Linda Zanaco on uh, your Becoming Me. Yes, I did. So yep. that is how she and I met. She is, um, she kind of delivers these cuddle cots to hospitals and really what they are, they're cooling devices so that your child um, can stay with you and you can bond before you have to leave them. Um, and it's just really a beautiful gift um, of time. And so we had three days together with her in the hospital room afterwards. And, um, you know, again, I just, I just watched God show up in these supernatural ways you know in the moments Mm -hmm. where you just know that you don't physically have it in you um the 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 main moment being one that I had um thought about my entire pregnancy Mm -hmm. there were there were hard moments all throughout but it was it was the day that we had to leave the hospital and I just couldn't understand, like, how do you leave your child? Like, how do you walk out of those doors without your child? And um, and I woke up that morning, and tears were just falling down my face already. And and I just said to the Lord, I just said, I can't do it. Like, I just, I can't do this part. Like, I've been so strong. I've tried to be so strong, but I can't do this part. And Emily, I just felt this like head to toe. I mean, just peace, just fill my body. Like, I can't even describe it, but I knew I was going to be able to do it because he was inside of me. And um, so we spent the morning with her and rocked her. And, um, and then we, we handed her to the nurse and we, and we left and we got in the car and buckled up and I remember looking over at Cole and he looked at me and we just smiled and it was like wait we just walked through hell like how are we smiling like what what is happening and um and God just used that whole journey to usher both Cole and I into the the deepest water um of his grace and his love and we developed this like uncontrollable hunger we were like oh wow like that like I want more of that like (laughs) that that feeling um yeah so so we um we just made changes in our lives we um got you know surrounded by a group of people who were also just super hungry and um and we just you know we're just like going for it and we're just realizing tasting the richness mm-hmm. of of God, like really, you know, the the, the Holy Spirit, real mm-hmm. richness of God, um, stuff that we had kind of just, you know, we we had been in more of a comfortable situation beforehand, and um, and so fast forward about two and a half years after um, Emma's passing, and I just start feeling this stirring in my soul that um mm-hmm. that my time as a news anchor is going to be coming to an end. And um, I was like, wait, what, you know, this is what I spent a lot of time and sacrifice doing. um, And now, you know, um, and so anyway, 
Mm-hmm. You know, as we speak now, I, I've, I've launched a website called more with Brooke Martin.com um, with the whole premise being like, mm-hmm. Hey, there's more, there's more here for us in life in faith. Mm-hmm. Um, God wants so much more for us. than I think any of us, um, not any of us, but a lot of us are going after and, um, and how do we do that together? Like, how do we seek out mm-hmm. like God's true design? How do we tap into the fullness of who he has designed mm-hmm. us to be um, in a world that is really um, competing for our everything? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I even think about, you know, how many other people have made decisions, careers, whatever, and, and are now kind of feeling like, well, this is it for me. And what if God wants to take a turn with you? You know, are you like, are you even in a place like where you think that that's possible? Like have our dreams turned into our prisons in some ways? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think our generation especially is is kind of one of the first that really truly can do it all. And so we have done it all. And, um, and I don't necessarily know that like, that's like God's heart for us. I think right. his heart for us is um, all of him. And instead, we're chasing the all of everything. So. Oh, my. Okay. First off, like, wow. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is one of those moments where I almost I wish I was with you in person because the warrior strength it takes to share what you've shared, um, even going from I mean, your whole career is centered on sharing other people's stories. And you really had to lean into letting God share your story through you. And that takes a lot of vulnerability, a lot of strength. And the fact that from day one of this journey, he brought that word Emmanuel into your mind, reminding you like, hey, I'm with you. Like, girl, you're a warrior. Like, and thank you for sharing yeah. that. It's a well, big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I don't say this out of false humility, but I don't, I don't feel like it because I just feel like I'm just, um, hitching a ride. (laughs) Like I'm just holding on to his, to his cloak and just kind of like, you know, and it's been, um, it's been a a heartbreaking, Mm -hmm. exhilarating, Mm -hmm. encouraging and hopeful journey. Um, but I, I really feel like I'm just kind of along for the ride. And the, just the words, the intentionality, words matter, right? And even in a communications field, you get that. And watching what so many people would want to stamp on your and Cole's story as loss, the word God has birthed in you is more. Yeah. Like, it's just, man, I'm watching what God's doing in your life right now. It's just, I'm blown away. Um, mm. So a question as we lean into this next one together are you a coffee or a tea drinker? I know that mm. seems kind of light after what we've just journeyed through, but. <laughs> um, I am, this is funny you asked this because I am mostly a coffee drinker. Okay. Um, I love coffee, but we are in the middle of a cleanse right now where <gasps> we can only drink herbal tea. Um, and so I've been drinking a lot of tea, but, um, but I love coffee. Coffee's my Ooh, Girl, I'm, okay. So since we're on this cleanse, you're having a cup of herbal tea with somebody uh-huh. else and they're mm-hmm. in solidarity with you having herbal mm-hmm. tea too. They don't okay. want to tempt God you with them. coffee. Yes. Right. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're a good friend. So what would you say to encourage them on their own becoming journey? Oh, I would say don't run from pain. Um, I would say that um, to lean in, you know, I think that pain and suffering is the most powerful way that we can tap into the power and the presence of God himself. And so often we spend our lives protecting ourselves against it. And, you know, I mean, take, take abortion for, for example, you know, I think a lot of people think they're protecting by protecting themselves from pain, by making that decision. We could have made that decision and thought we were protecting ourselves, Mm -hmm. but look what we would have missed out on, you know, like that's the most heartbreaking thing to me. And, you know, I just, pain has just these, I mean, the Bible talks about pain 
you know, all the time. We, we don't necessarily love to like read about that or actually like internalize that, but there's a reason. Like there, I think about when Paul was like in prison and he's writing to the Philippians, right? And there's this section that I just love because he says, I know that through your prayers and through the work of the Holy Spirit, first of all, bing, bang, right? Like prayer and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, I could talk a lot more about that in general. I think we're, we're not hammering down on those two things specifically, but he says through, through your prayer and the work of the Holy Spirit, I know that this is going to turn out for my deliverance. Mm. And I just thought that um, like, like how true is that? So he says, this is going to turn out for my deliverance for it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed but that Christ will be honored in my body, yeah. whether it's through life or death. So like here, here he's saying like pain leads to deliverance. Why? Mm-hmm. You know, like, because it gives us a new perspective yeah. of, of Christ being honored. Like that's it. And then that I won't be ashamed. Like pain has a way of stripping away our fear of man, unlike anything mm-hmm. else. And really nothing else can strip away our fear of man. And it's something I struggled with my entire life, especially Mm -hmm. being on camera. Like I was constantly worried about what people thought or, you know, Mm -hmm. how I was being portrayed or, um, you know, and, and man, did this just cleanse that all like, so, you know, and so I just think if we can change our perspective, when we look at pain to, I am leaning into you, Lord, Mm-hmm. And I am trusting that your promises is, are true and that you're going to do a transformational work in my life yeah. through this. Um, your pain all of a sudden turns into a gift. Yeah. And so, you know, I look at our daughter, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be with her. Like, does it uh-huh. hurt? Yes. Like, do I miss her? Yes. I am going to spend eternity with her. And in the meantime, yeah. I have been given the most beautiful gift mm. through her um, that cut ca- that God could have given us. So I would just say, if I'm having tea, like, mm. um, don't be scared of the pain. I know it hurts, but it's doing something in you that nothing else can do. And so chase after it and lean into him. Girl, you just got me crying this entire <laughs> interview. So powerful. So, and truly, if you want to become who God made you to be, you have to lean into what you just said. If we yeah. tried to skip over or rewrite or fast forward through the pain, yeah. we would literally miss out on so many chapters that might not feel beautiful in the moment, but looking back, the more that God did in us and awakened us to, yeah. I mean, it's, it's in, indescribable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, and it's how we can relate to Jesus Christ himself yeah. on the most personal level. I mean, you know, when he's in the garden, he's like, cut take this cup from me. Like the, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, Oh, I know. Like, I, I mean, I don't know it, like that, but it's like, yeah. I said that, like, take yeah. this from me. Like, don't let me, you know? And so it's, it's like, mm. you just, yeah. So full. So mm. like, that is the fullness of Christ in you is when you can relate. So, you know, I just think that it, what people have to understand is that it's a choice Yeah, that pain is an invitation but mm-hmm. it's our choice whether to accept it because a lot of people push against it and it turns mm-hmm. into bitterness and resentment. Um, but if you, man, if you are SEPS for that, like God will take you on a beautiful journey. Oh, girl. Like I literally want to listen to you talk all day. <laughs> Just give me a bucket or herbal tea. Let's go. So, <laughs> If um, if somebody is watching your story and they were really wanting to check out your website, mm-hmm. um, they want to learn more from Brooke, mm-hmm. where can yeah. they meet you online? Yeah. So um, morewithbrookemartin.com is the website. And then I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, I'm actually in the process right now of writing a curriculum about walking through suffering. <sighs> so um, I'm going to hopefully get that up on my website in the next month or two. Um, nice. Um, but that's kind of my, my latest project. I'm just, you know, Emily, I, I, I honestly don't know. People are like, what are you doing now? I'm like, I'm great question. Um, I don't really know. Um, but I'm just taking it like one step at a time and yeah. just trying to really surrender to, mm. to where God wants me in this season. So I more to come. It. I love it. And I love that word and you warrior friend. Um, you yeah. know, Hey, before we close and I don't always end becoming stories this way, but I would love, um, and I think becoming me.tv would really 
love the privilege of praying over you. And Mm -hmm. if you don't mind, I just want to pray over you, Cole, your family, and the more that God's doing in your life. Is that okay? Emily, I would be so honored. Yes. Thank you. God, um, I just thank you. Thank you for the gift of Brooke, who she is. This journey that she and Cole have been on is not easy. And as she just challenged us over the last few moments to really lean into our pain, to not run away from it. God, I know that she can challenge us because she's walked through that. She is walking through it. And God, as you continue to open up every door for Brooke and Cole to share their story, I ask that you go before them. You give them the words to say. Um, God, it can be emotional and it can feel like a lot to have to unpack the pain, um, that cup that she and Cole begged you to take away and reliving those moments over and over. So I ask that you give her the strength, you give her the wisdom and discernment that you continually remind her with that word, your name, your presence, your identity that you reminded her of from day one, Emmanuel, you are with her. You are in her, you're for her. Nothing about Brooke's story takes you by surprise. And God, I ask that you continue to do more in and through her, that you open her eyes to what more is. You continue to develop resources through her. God, she is so right. So many of us are walking through life with pain and habits and hurts and hangups, and it can feel so hard to find hope. And I ask that as her and Cole, her family are partnering with people to discover hope in your son, that you pour out your blessing all over them. You continue to remind her in big and little ways every single day of who you've made her to be, that this is not for nothing, and that you are doing so much more in and through her life than she could ever have dreamed or imagined possible. God, we love you, and I thank you for this warrior friend. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Emily. Thank you. Like this was such an honor. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your story. You're amazing. I'm cheering you on. Thanks so much. Thanks for what you're doing too. Really amazing work. Well, thank you. Yeah.